superstars! So guys, this is a really cool episode. I have had so many messages from you guys asking about horse care, asking about farrying in particular, what makes a good farrier, what makes a bad farrier, what are we looking for when it comes to what our farriers are about blacksmiths actually do with our horse's feet. So this whole episode is all about that. I am gonna show you some newfound technology where we actually put sensors on the horse's feet and we can trot them out and see exactly where the horse's feet land. How cool is that? It's really, really cool. So this whole episode is all about that because imagine guys, you have a horse that's 600, 700, 800 kilos and it's got these tiny little feet that it has to put all its weight on and all its balance on. If they're a little bit out of line, if they're a little bit not quite right, what do you think is gonna happen to the way they go? Or worse still, injuries to their legs and their tendons and bones even. So farrying is so important when it comes to soundness and you guys just keep asking me those questions. Leash, how do we keep our horses sound? What makes a good blacksmith? What makes a bad one? If you could tell us one thing to spend our money on, what would it be? Well, dressage mastery, of course, guys, but then a blacksmith. <laughs> so this video is gonna highlight all of that to you in a really visual way, show you how horses that land in certain ways can make a difference to their legs. So I hope you enjoy it, guys. It's a little bit rough and ready because it was something we did um, we do anyway with our horses and we did a little bit what um, last minute, but um, I think you really like it. So get into it. I hope you enjoy it. So what we got here is the Workman Black Gate Analysis Kit. Um, we've got four sensors here, one for each foot, red ones for the fronts, black ones for the hinds. And what it does is it measures the horse walking and trotting in a straight line. You want to get sort of at least at least 20 strides, preferably more, because it measures on the average. So um, obviously the more strides you get, the better the average. If the, the lower the number, if you have one stride that's slightly out, it can throw the whole average out. So the more strides, the better. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put this on uh, Alicia's horse G, and we're going to trot him outside and do do sort of 30, 30 paces, hopefully walking, thirty paces trotting out there. We'll then pause the recording, and then we'll do thirty paces walking, thirty paces trotting in the school, and the machine knows when it's on concrete or in a school. So. Cool. And uh, yeah, it, it measures um, um, time of landing, um, the uh, mid stance and the breakover, where that breakover is, where the landing pattern is. And we can, we can use this machine to help us come to a, a conclusion about what we want to do for the shoeing. It doesn't give you... Um, you know, this is how to shoe this horse. It just gives you the data that you need to help you make a decision, really. Cool. And go from there. All right, guys, so all we're doing here is we're just filling in all these details. So all horses have a passport, all warm bloods do anyway, and we just fill it in so that we can track him. Um, so we're gonna get onto that, and then um, the next thing you'll see is us, or me, running up the, the hard surface. <laughs> see you soon. is we're just prepping the feet um, and we're just sanding them back just so that there's a better connectivity there. Uh, so this is all the dirt, any mask, anything like that and just makes it all connect a little bit better. I got that right, Charlie? Um, so what we're doing here is um, the sensors are stuck on with uh, these Velcro strips. It's uh, quite simple, they're just stuck to the hoof like that, just below the coronet there. Uh, as close to the centre as possible. With the hinds, because uh, the sensors are stuck out, we don't want them on the front because there's a chance they can um, yep. forge and smack them off. So the hinds just go on the side there, just just off of the toe, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right. And this horse in particular, we've worked really hard with him. Um, when we first got him, 
he had two exquisitely different sized feet, didn't he? Um, one was, yes. I can't remember which one was the bigger one, I think it was the dark one. Yes. But it was massively different in size. And this is his feet now on a shoeing day. So he's due for shoeing. Um, so it shows you what a difference we've made in them. And now that we've got them to the eye looking super, um, now we start to look a bit deeper and um, uh, try to look at things a little bit more clinically now that's not just to the eye. Um, but to take this step when they were so ridiculously wrong is almost pointless because it's, it's so, it's almost like he was wearing a high heel and a welly. <laughs> um, now he's got visually relatively good feet, um, which has taken us since November we started with him. Um, now we can start to go, right, let's look at this a little bit more clinically now. And that's where we're at. So yeah, so we're going to prep these out. Um, and we're doing this before we've completed the shoeing so that we can now base our next shoeing, which we're doing today, on the findings that we find today. Um, so this machine won't tell us or tell Charlie exactly what to do. He won't say, take three mils off this side and put eight mils on this side. But what he will show to Charlie, show Charlie, what it will show Charlie rather, is what you can't see to the naked eye. It slows down the movement considerably so that you can actually see what's going on um, more accurately and you can watch it back and you can slow it down and you can pause it in places and it will show you exactly where he's landing on the foot, um, uh, which you really can't see to the naked eye unless it was tremendously bad and really the horse was uber duper lame. So this is just, this is really something to make a sound horse better. Um, um, and you'd be surprised what you can do. This can be the difference between clean changes, it can be the difference between a, um, an extended trot that's arrhythmical or rhythmical, it can be the difference between a horse lifts one leg a little bit higher than the other, um, and it can most certainly be the difference between blown tendons and not. So um, it's, a, it's a really, um, really worthwhile investment, this sort of stuff. So guys, I just want to interrupt here for a second and I just want to give you a bit of a, an overview again. When you're watching this, this is super interesting, right? It's really interesting. But the expectation here is not necessarily that you spend necessarily spend the money and get this machine put on your horses so that you can see exactly where their feet are. It's more of an exercise so that you understand the concept. So for example, if you have your blacksmith and he doesn't trot your horse out before he does his feet, that might start to put some alarm bells in your brain where you go, hang on a second. You kind of need to know how he lands to know what sort of shoes to put on. And they're just this, there's just the information that gives you more of an understanding of what to expect. So we'll get back into it again, but I didn't want any of you to think of, oh my gosh, now I have to go and get this machine. You don't. It's more just so that you understand in depth what we're aiming for when we're showing our horses. Get back into it. Off you go. Bye. and then we're going to move to a soft surface so that we can see the difference. You're going to stay there, Hannah, it's okay. I'll walk past. All right, so just, uh, just walk um, up to the end of the track yep. um, in a straight line and, and walk back and then drop and then drop back. So we're recording now. Whoa. 
Okay. Cool. So, Real. um, Arena? Yep. Yeah, we're going to Arena, so we pause the recording now. Not your recording, honey, our recording. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Alright, so we take you to the soft surface. And, um, how long is going while the soft? Yeah, so the sensors will know, um, that it's been on concrete just now. And when we go in here and we restart the recording, it'll know it's on the soft and we'll, we'll get slight changes in the recording as well. Some yeah. boxes will go different on the hard and different on the soft. Yeah. And we want to go higher. Yeah, so exactly the same again. So we're recording again now. So I just walk up to the windows and back and then trot back to them and down again. <laughs> now don't worry, it'll it'll it won't register those uh, those little buck moments. <laughs> Shall I do it again? Or? Yeah, maybe just trot up again because um, <laughs> we probably missed about five oh, or six strides there. <laughs> it's all very exciting, isn't it, mate? things that were sitting on the feet so now that's just going into the computer that'll all download and then it'll give us a reading and then we'll be able to go through and um, see what happened and um, what Charlie was saying those moments when he leaps through the air like a crazy person or crazy horse <laughs> the machines intelligent enough to go that's abnormal that's not really normal footfalls and it won't actually factor that into the reading which is um pretty impressive really all right so this moved to the dark so we could see so now we've loaded it so this um, this measurement here is the first one, so on the concrete, and uh, measurement two is uh, the one we did in the school. So let's just select in that, we'll link them up. Cool. Um, so what we got here is uh, how many strides we did. Um, uh, ideally, we'd want a few more strides uh, on the trot, but we've got plenty for the walk. Um, this is the angle of the hoof wall on the average. Um, uh, the hoof does actually um, change its angle, so when it's uh, when it's weight bearing, it'll, um, the 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 angle will get um, uh, what's the word more acute, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and then when it's in the f uh, in the flight phase and the weight's off it and the bone column, it'll it'll um, it'll go more obtuse. Um, so yeah, we got that, um, and we can go to the hinds here. Um, you don't get the angle for the hinds, unfortunately, um, just where we have to have the sensor on the side to stop it knocking off. Um, um, but it's something they're going to work on in time. I'm hoping that they will, um, they'll make these sensors smaller so that we can, um, you know, eventually have it that you can trot them around in a circle and use them and, um, who knows, maybe for show jumpers and that go over jumps and things and we can record them doing that. So this is the footfall, nice and even. Um, so this little, this first little triangle here, the, this white one, this is the landing phase. So um, if we've got the, got the hoof here, this from first point of impact from when it's then flat on the ground, um, this coloured line here is the mid stance, so as the, as the bone column comes down up over and then the second we start to get some uh, heel lifting 
we then go into the breakover stage. So this is uh, in walk um, and down here we have in trot. So um, yeah, and then we can get in chronological. So this is how he's actually going. Um, and this really just breaks it down, makes it easy to see and flag up problems. Um, um, but we, if we go back to the compare, um, we're, we're nice and even. We could maybe try and improve the, how, how long the landing phase is taking on the hinds. Um, but he has been having stifle problems, this horse. So that's, uh, that, that to me is flagging up. Um, you know, um, that is probably compensating a little bit, but we know he's perfectly sound, but this just highlights everything here. So now if we go into the analyze. So, so just back to that a little bit. So what you want to know, that's all right. So what you're saying is that this could be, he could land longer or not as long? Um, we could probably reduce the, the, the time here. Um, so with, with the, with the front seat, I mean, that, that's, that's a lovely reading that is, um, yeah. so, so what um, you're saying is this little line, this little white triangle, yeah. you kind of want the back triangle to be about the same size as the, what, as the top triangle. Yeah. Um, I mean, they normally do take longer in the hinds to, to land cause, um, uh, where the hocks are a hinge joint, it tend, they tend to come round and back in again. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so it's always going to be a yeah, longer one. They, they tend not to land as perfectly square as um as they would and and again where he where we know he's been having stifle problems yep. um uh you know that that's just sort of um you know so there's nothing way, necessarily you know. in the shoeing that we would no we're with that. we're um yeah we're, we're we're pretty even which is the main thing if if okay. say this right hind the triangle was you know out here yeah. we'd be going right that's that's not good we're, okay. get, we're starting to get some compensation going on here so, so basically what this is really doing is affirming what we already know yeah yep cool so here we go to the 3d analyze of the foot flight um and we can so if we go to normal so th this is how if you were if you were trotting up the horse this is how quick it would look to to you your eyes see it's just it's just hard to look to to you your eyes see it's just it's just hard to really get a an accurate um in your head of how this is uh how this is landing and stuff, so we can slow this right down to 0 0.10 of a of a second, and we can play around with this and really see how we're landing. That's quite nice and flat. And this so is the these are the hinds. hinds. Yep. So we're getting a little bit of um, uh, sort of shunting there. Um, again, I reckon that's from the his stifle yeah. injuries. Um, we go to the fronts. Do, 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 do. And when you say shunting, it's that's they're like twisting. Is that what you mean? Yeah, um, just a sort of. Um, I think where he's so kind of post-legged, and mm -hmm. and he is he is due for shoeing as well. So it's just as he's coming in, he, we're getting a little bit of a, a roll, a rock, a yeah, rocking yeah. Um, going on. All right. So for for me as a farrier, what what I love is I can I can slow this right down and go right where where's this horse landing and can I can I reduce it so we can see we're getting a little bit probably outside heel. Um we can get um a side profile here. Yeah. And this is the stride length here. And this is the, this main line here is the average line of uh, the strides we've done. And the the blurriness is where it's, where it's been changing. So, so, that's the, so the blurred line's the variant? Yeah, and yeah. And the solid line is the average? Yeah, so it, it, it hasn't gone, it hasn't deviated any more than that. Um, which is quite good, That that's quite a, that's quite a nice reading, I think. Um, you can see here with the breakover. So we're pretty close to the center of toe. Normally just slightly outside, but that's pretty good. Happy with that. Uh, landing. 
yeah so we can there's things we can do so here we can maybe take a, a, a little smidge off the um off the outside of the shoe here just to just to try and get the the front's landing more evenly um and then spread the spread the load around the whole hoof uh, the problem is if you're getting a real direct impact on one area of the hoof that hoof is then part of the hoof is then having to work a lot harder you're then putting strain on ligaments tendons yeah. um so if we can get the whole hoof take absorbing the impact it makes everything above it work easier so um and then here we have the ring of workmen so out of those two which would be the better if you like which is the better example of it or are they um, so close that it's not funny they're pretty even um um, I mean, the main thing is the time as well. So we've, yeah, th this one would be the preferred just because it's 14 milliseconds. Um, um, and this is one, but... And is, it, a, is a millisecond between them statistically, and is it, it is it's, important it's, or it's not? It's almost negligible. Yeah, um, okay. So I can, I can show you in a minute uh, a horse that was... Uh, genuinely lame and you yeah. can see the difference there and yeah. so that that's that's pretty good i'm i'm okay. happy with that now this is um the ring of workmen so this is showing the um loading points so from landing do, 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 do. And we'll start to see uh yeah so me so this is where he's landing and then we'll see the the pressure starts to dissipate round the round the hoof here just as he gets his center so we're in the mid stance now and which is the longest part of the the stance and then we'll see this little red dot starting at the stance in trot so we've got the landing 15 milliseconds long starts off here works round now we're in the mid stance so as the 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 hoof's fully on the ground now, and we're now in the mid stance as the bone column comes up over through to the center, and then we'll get into the breakover stage, and we'll see this little red dot, which is the uh, um, point of most pressure, start to shoot off. So you can see here, we're now going into the breakover, the heels are lifting, and then the outside toe is the last point of him yeah. point of impact with the ground and in walk we got a uh, slightly different so we're landing slightly slightly toe heavy coming back round center this is hines again isn't it uh they, these are the front these sorry are the front. Okay, sorry <laughs> in the mid stance coming up round and then we get into the breakover again, and then pretty pretty central for the for the walk. Mm. Um, and then we can go to the hinds. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, again, coming around. Was a bit interesting. And his hinds are the worst. When we met him, he basically yeah. had zero toe. It was the most insane thing ever, and no frog, if we I remember correctly. Yeah, it was just uh, it was just all here. It was the uh, it was the most post-legged thing I've, <laughs> I've seen. You know, we've started to get some hoof shape, so we're still getting some. We're still getting a lot of loading at the at the toe this is in walk again so he's probably just trying to to reduce himself from slipping on the concrete um just landing slightly toe heavy um but yeah coming back around the center and then back off again into the breakover and that is something his horse did when he first arrived he literally just walked on his toes mm. from the hind leg and again this is in trot now so yeah again still landing toe heavy but then 
breakover is pretty good over is pretty good taking a while to sort of stabilize himself so we can see the dots yeah. shooting around a little bit he is he is due for shooing behind though so um you know this is uh this is the I, worst I'm, case i'm expecting we'll um we'll uh after shooing it'll 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 hopefully <laughs> look a lot better <laughs> we'll delete all the video <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> too right <laughs> So is that something that, so basically that there you think we can fix with the shoeing a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It, it's taken, it's taken a while with him because, um, we, we've, we've slowly got a better hoof shape out mm. of him and he's been recovering, uh, from this injury as mm. well. So, um, he's still, you know, trying to, trying to save himself and a little bit. When we talk about the injury here, guys, as well, we need to specify it's not, he was never lame. Um, it was just taking him from that seven to a 10. Um, and uh, the stifle, one side was definitely weaker than the other. So he's never lame. Um, it's just that his feet, well, he should have been lame. <laughs> yes. If you looked at his feet and um, looked at the weakness in the stifle that you could clearly see, he should have been lame. But he's such a strong, talented horse, he never was. So you could quite easily do nothing. Um, and he would still probably get 70%, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. But this is the sort of thing that gives you longevity in them. If you fix these things now and um, uh, really take note of these things, then your horse is less likely to break when it's 15, 16, 17, and they continue on till they're 20 doing Grand Prix. If you ignore it now, this is where all of a sudden you wake up one day and go, oh, shit, my horse is lame. Because obviously if it's not putting its feet on the ground properly, it's not using its stifle or its knee or its hock in a good way, it either has to be A, lame, or B, compensating somewhere else. And wherever else it's compensating is going to have extra wear and tear and therefore break in a quicker way. Would that be fair? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're doing here. Cool. And the, get, the good thing about this is, so we've we've done an assessment today. Um, we can then do another assessment in three months' time or, or three shoeings' time, something like that and we can then see what changes have happened and again like uh, alicia was saying if you're starting to get big changes or, or or even little changes um we can we can jump on it and go right why is that happening or what can we do to improve that rather than um a year down the line uh the horse blows a tendon or something yeah exactly and so all in all this has been um an investigatory exercise um it's an informational exercise to see what we've got because we've fixed it or charlie has fixed it to a point where visually it's quite good you know before it was looking at a, a, a saucer and a dinner plate it was crazy the difference between them and he was literally landing on his toes very very easily to see now he seems to be walking and, and working in a really correct way you need these sorts of tools to be able to find those last finer details um, and this is what gets it from good to great and then keeps it great before you if it becomes visual it's already that bad does that make sense these tools are there so that we can fix things before they get visual because once they're visual it's pretty bad yeah so i hope you enjoyed that guys this is the very first installment of me showing you more horse care things because dressage success doesn't just come from riding it comes from riding on a horse that has rhythm if a horse doesn't have rhythm why does it have rhythm and so often it's because of its legs. It's because of the way the saddle fits, maybe. There's so many other horse care related issues that have, have an effect on how your dressage goes. So remember, comment below, ask me more questions. Let me know if you want more things about this. And don't forget again about our May competition, 500 pounds up for grabs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the description underneath. Bye guys. Mwah. See you.